Chemicals have many benefits, but they must be well managed to make sure there are no negative effects on the environment or on human health. And this is where chemicals regulations come into play. To set good chemical standards, policymakers have to understand both the benefits and the costs they will bring to society. Ideally, benefits should be framed in monetary terms for comparison with the costs, so you can determine the net benefits of any particular policy. Now, unfortunately, there is not enough information on the economic benefits of reducing chemicals exposure. Without these key data, policymakers cannot do that cost-benefit assessment of regulation. And that's why the OECD is looking at how much people are willing to pay to reduce health impacts from chemicals. The OECD Swatchy project stands for Surveys on Willingness to Pay to Avoid Negative Chemicals-Related Health Impacts. The project uses willingness to pay values to calculate the social benefits of preventing chemicals exposure-related disease. Policymakers can then compare the social benefits against the cost of implementing chemicals regulations. 46 surveys have been conducted so far across 22 countries with over 50,000 respondents, covering five health impacts. Asthma, infertility, IQ loss, chronic kidney disease, and very low birth weight. People are willing to pay a lot to protect their health. For example, the social benefit of preventing one case of very low birth weight is 1.2 million US dollars and the benefit of preventing one case of chronic kidney disease is 805,000 US dollars. These values are significantly higher than what are currently used in cost-benefit analysis. And also, these results suggest that chemicals management systems are worth implementing. For the first time, this project captured the full social benefits of managing chemicals exposure created harmonized and comparable willingness to pay values across countries, and it also brought together regulators and academics worldwide. So without the information on the monetary value of the health benefits of chemical exposure regulation, it's quite likely that you're gonna get that regulation wrong. We need to use these new data from the SWASH effort in cost-benefit analyses, and we need to keep measuring better the benefits of reducing chemicals related to health effects. These collaboration benefits not only people who are working on, or regulators who are working on chemicals, but also on other uh, health-related issues like air pollution or water quality. The study that I did on the willingness to pay to reduce asthma severity and the willingness to pay to reduce the probability of getting asthma if you haven't already had it is very applicable to air pollution regulations because asthma is linked to uh, air pollution both in its severity and uh, in the probability of getting it. So this should make air quality cost-benefit analyses for setting ambient air quality standards or to set emission standards more accurate. We will continue doing this work and, and estimate values for other health endpoints, for instance, on thyroid dysfunction. 